Whenever I discuss technology and education with teachers, one of the number one questions I get asked is always this. Do my students suffer when testing is moved from pen and paper to online formats? Well, let's see if we can't answer that question today. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now, as you know, I have a new book coming out called The Digital Delusion, How Classroom Technology Harms Our Kids' Learning and How to Help Them Thrive Again. And what we're doing is we're going through each chapter looking at relevant research. So today, let's take a look at Chapter 2, Proof of Failure. As you can probably guess, this is where all the hard data comes in that shows digital technology harms learning by and large across all levels of education. Now, rather than looking at a specific research paper today, I'd rather look at two key ideas, which are gonna help you think about data moving forward when it comes to ed tech. Idea number one is here. It's a concept called the mode effect. Now put simply, this says human beings perform differently when we do things on paper versus a screen. And nine times out of 10, we perform worse on a screen. So when it comes to learning, the mode effect basically says anytime you move from paper to digital, you should see a drop in performance. Now, how bad is that drop? To understand, let's take a look at some international tests. So let's take a look first at the PISA. This is a test given to hundreds of thousands of kids every three years across 90 plus countries in the world. In 2012, that was the last year this test was paper-based and the average score that year was 495. Pretty good. In 2015, that is when they moved pure digital and that year we only saw scores of 492. So wait a second, that's only a drop of three points. That's not bad at all. Okay, let's go to another one. What about TIMS? This is the international test of mathematics skills and ability. In 2015, that was the last time they did paper, average score 499. But in 2019, when they moved digital, average score only of 497. So that's only a drop of two points. Okay, let's try one more. Pearls. This is the international reading exam. Last time they did reading on paper was 2016. We saw an average score of 518. Surely we're going to see a mode effect here. 2021, when they moved digital, we saw a score of 514, only a drop of four points. So wait a second, everything appears to be working just fine. Where's that magical mode effect everyone is talking about? That's gonna bring us to the second concept we need to learn about today. It's called renorming. Now the official definition for renorming says this, the application of mathematical operations to return values to a baseline or normed standard. Now that's a lot of words. Let's see if we can't make that a little bit simpler. Renorming basically says any time a group of people perform worse or better on a test, what we can do is simply shift their scores to make it look equivalent to everyone else. So realistically, renorming is white lies to maintain consistency. Let's say everyone takes a test this year and gets 20 points. Next year, every new kid takes the same test, but they only get 10 points. Renorming says, cool, let's just give all of those new kids 10 bonus points to make it look consistent across years. Or flip it, if everyone gets 20 this year and everyone scores 30 next year, let's just take away 10 points for them to make it look equivalent. Now the trick is people who create tests do everything they can to hide their renorming procedures. They do not want people to know this is going on and it is very hard to suss out how it works. But luckily, some intrepid researchers have done some digging and they were able to find some stuff out. So let's go back to PISA. When PISA made the jump from paper to digital, kids performed significantly worse on 91 questions when it was presented on a screen. That is 34% of the exam. So what did they do? They simply erased these questions. Kids had to answer them, but eh, they didn't include them in the scoring. They just threw them away so no one knew these things existed. But when you do some digging, you find those 91 questions and you plug them back into the test, it turns out kids did 14 points worse when they made the move from paper to digital. So let's go back to our scores. That means on the last paper version, we were looking at an average of 495. When it moved digital, we're really looking at an average of 478. That's a drop of 17 points. Now to put that into context, 17 points is the equivalent to a seven percentile drop. So kids who normally would score at the 50th percentile, simply by making them take a test online, they will drop to the 43rd percentile. That's how big the mode effect was there. But what about TIMS? Same thing, you gotta do some real digging, but when you do, you find out when TIMS move digital, 
they showed a 17 point drop on average. So going back to our scores, the last time they did paper, we're looking at 499. When they move digital, we're really looking at 479. That's a 20 point drop. Now, what does that mean in context? That's about one and a half semesters of learning worse. Simply by going from paper to screens, one and a half semesters of learning just gets wiped from your performance. And let's go to Pearls, the reading exam. Kids who took a paper exam answered about 66.7% of questions correct. But kids who took the exact same exam on a screen only answered about 60.5%. Now, when you do your math, you figure out that's equivalent to about a 12-point drop. So going back to our scores, the last time we were paper, 518. When we moved digital, 502. That's a 16-point drop. And when it comes to pearls, that's the equivalent of a 6th percentile drop. So from the 50th to the 44th percentile, simply by changing the medium you are taking your test on. So we're back to our question. Do my students suffer when testing is moved from pen and paper to online formats? Absolutely. The trick is if you're using a standardized test, you might never see it because the test makers have ways to use stats to futz that data and make it appear equivalent. So let's bring this back. What does this mean for us as teachers? First idea is clearly this, print it out. If you're giving a test, an exam, an assignment, and you genuinely want to understand what your kids can do, what they can achieve, do it on paper. We see higher performance, more accurate reflection of what our kids know simply when we change the medium back to pen and paper. The next thing is this, lower scores doesn't necessarily mean lower ability. As we've seen, when kids move from paper to screens, their scores drop, but it's unlikely that means their abilities drop. It just means that the medium we're using isn't giving them the chance to demonstrate what they can actually do. So sometimes when we see score drops across grade levels, across years, across districts, that might not necessarily mean a learning drop. It might simply mean a medium drop. Change the medium, you might see that data shift. So we've got to be very careful with how we interpret and then apply data within our practice. Next is here, familiarity does not confer advantage. Most people think that because kids grew up with technology that they should be able to perform better on technology. It's kind of the myth of the digital native, right? They're raised by this stuff, of course they can perform on it. That unfortunately is not the case. The mode effect, our inability to perform on a screen, doesn't have anything to do with practice or familiarity. It has to do with biology. Now in the book, we'll go into a little bit more detail, but realistically, the hit we take when we move to screen will always exist because screens simply do not resonate with how human biology has evolved over 150,000 years to drive learning. So just to see an example of this, let's go back to the PISA exam. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a graph. On this side of the graph, we're going to take a look at total PISA score. Now this is collapsed across 2012, 2015, and 2018. And on this side of the graph, we're going to see how often do kids use digital technology in schools, from no time at all up to more than six hours per day. So as kids spend more time on technology, what happens to their ability to perform on the PISA exam? Doesn't matter if the test was digital, everyone who spends more time on computers does worse than kids who don't. And that drop is equivalent to about 67 points. That's a drop from the 50th percentile to the 32nd percentile, so familiarity does not breed advantage. And last but not least, here's where we see learning is not screen proof. A lot of people think so long as the pedagogy is sound, then it doesn't matter what tools we use to teach, everyone should learn basically the same. And here's where we see, no, the tools matter as much as the pedagogy. The exact same teaching or learning strategy done on paper versus screen will confer two different outcomes. The medium is the message. The medium itself will change what we learn, what we focus on, how deep we go into that learning. Not all tools are created equal, and we see when it comes to learning, if learning is your ultimate goal, analog seems to be better suited to the task than digital tools. If you take a look at my book, The Digital Delusion, we go into a lot more of these ideas. In this chapter, specifically chapter two, we dive into a lot more data than just this, showing that, yeah, tech harms learning, and it has been doing it for well over a quarter century. So the book comes out on December 7th. I hope you all get a chance to, to get it and read and, and you get something good from it. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for hanging out. If you'd like to learn a little bit more, you can find us online at www.lmeglobal.net or you can take a look at our award-winning Science of Learning course called the Learning Blueprint, one for teachers, one for students that help bring this material into schools. Otherwise, thank you all so much and I'll see you at the next one. Bye, y'all.